Hey, if you want to stick with us versus herd, if it's your first time here for the content, hit subscribe. If you want to get notifications for when we post videos, tap the bell. If you want to join our options trading live channel, I go live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before market open. Link is below in the description. And if you want to join the UBH fam, our community, links are below in the description to our Discord and our options trading group on Facebook. If you made money today, comment got paid. If you lost money today, comment learned a lesson. And if you do me a favor, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube videos and telling YouTube to check out my video. So definitely appreciate it. Today was kind of a crazy day of trading the banks. You know, right now the S&Ps are down 68, Dow's down 46, and NASDAQ closed down 100 uh, today. And, you know, I had some earnings play that was mostly trading the financials. Had some had some, had some, some nice wins today. So it was up a little bit over $300 in profits. Lost a little bit on Bank of America. But, you know, covering, covering XLF first, which tracks the financial sector. I had the 22 puts for May 30th. I wasn't intending to take it off today. But for XLF, you know, really the banks just got, got, got in big trouble today, along with Bank of America. Bank, Bank of America was down over like 6.5%, as you can see. We'll cover that in a second. But, you know, what I was looking at here yesterday, it was up 20 at 23 is when I shorted it. It dropped down to 21. And I'm thinking, you know, my target was like the 21 or 20 area. I think it could come down to 20, but I didn't want to take the chance. Also, because I lost on Bank of America. What I had on Bank of America was I had a naked straddle at the 23 and a half. So if we look at Bank of America, lost lost $16 on it. Uh, Bank of America, I was short the 23 and a half strike puts for this week expiration. I got a dollar fifty three credit, bought it back for a dollar sixty nine. So I lost some money on there. And what I was worried about at open, it would have, it would have turned out okay, but my position basically it looked like this right here. Now I was short, I was short here. It's now going for a dollar. Oops, sorry, I'm at twenty twenty three and a half, a dollar forty five. So it wouldn't really have made that much of a difference. Sure, I would have been profitable on it. Would have made a, a whopping eight dollars on there instead of losing sixteen dollars. So it wouldn't it didn't make a big difference, you know, for me. But what I was worried about is because I sold it naked. You know, if this dropped too far at open, Bank of America was definitely, definitely lagging. You know, Bank of America ripped all the way down to 2187 before coming back up. And, you know, if, if, if I close it around like 2250, you know, we would have made like 40 bucks or something like that. You know, I only got a dollar fifty-three credit, but I figured it wasn't, it, I didn't really want to mess around with it. I didn't really want to mess around with it at all. So Bank of America, we're probably just going to chill on. Goldman Sachs, I did have a successful earnings play on Goldman Sachs, so I made $87 on that today. If we're looking at Goldman Sachs, I had a call, a short call butterfly, and I'll, co I'll cover this uh, put in a second here. So, because I'm still covering, going into tomorrow with Goldman Sachs, but I got 385 credit, bought it back for 298, so we made, you know, we made the $87 there. I was short for next week expiration. I was short the 175 call, bought two of the 185 calls, and I was short the 187.50 call. So it looked pretty good. The one thing about Goldman Sachs was, you know, it hit my target. You know, if you guys watched my videos from yesterday, I said Goldman Sachs, I'm looking for like the 170 range. I do think it could come down to the 160 range by next week. But Goldman, Goldman Sachs was one of the stocks that you know, buck the trend, JPM was down, Bank of America got down, all the banks were down. This one, if I didn't close that position down and open, I would definitely be losing a lot of money in that position. So I made the $87, I closed it out, and then I reloaded a short at 175. I'm still short here. I, I reloaded the short when it was like 175, 176 area. I bought the 175 put, which I'm currently down on right now. I bought it for 415. I'm holding it into tomorrow because I do think you know, if we're looking at the one year here, I still think it is downtrending here. If it could have popped up to like 183, I would have probably changed my mind and would have just cut my losses and left. But since it's it's maintaining the downtrend here, it really needs to break above like the 183 area to start looking more bullish for a leg up to like the 190 area. But I'm thinking we're gonna revisit the 170s by Friday, which is why it's kind of a risky play. But I did cover my tracks today you know, with that, so I was down, right now I'm down 150, I'm down 150 on that on that put right now.
but to, to cover my to cover my tracks, I defended it by playing the Netflix uh, Netflix call. I had the 430 call it was pretty simple. I made $160 on that. If I go into Netflix here, let's do today. Last couple of days we made like a good 500 bucks on Netflix though. Trade just day trading. I just been day trading Netflix. I haven't been holding overnight or anything just because it's kind of risky. But people are like, why is why is why is Netflix going up? Why is Netflix going up? And within 20 minutes or so, we we made the uh, $160. Bought it for 9:15. Sold it for 10:75. About the 4:30 put at 11:07 a.m. Central Time. Now Netflix. Why did I put this trade on? You know, mainly because when it broke out of here, it, it kept it kept trying to test this area. It was moving really slow. Looked like it wanted to pop. As soon as it popped up above 431, and it was like it was like 431.30, I put the trade on at yeah, 11:07. Here's 11:05 candle right here, 11:05 when it popped up, and then I sold it at 11:32, which was right in here. And thankfully, I did because it dropped really hard. You know, this this was pretty crazy. If we look at the option pricing right now on the 430 call. I'm so used to buying puts. My, my mouse actually just went over to the put side, <laughs> but I bought a call on this. You know, I sold it for 10.75 and it closed at man, this is crazy, 5.50. So I sold it. At, I can't. Oh my gosh, I didn't even I didn't even realize. So I sold it here. Look at this, 10.75. This is amazing timing. 10.75, and the high of the day is 1080 i got out i mean that's rare the timing is that impeccable so i bought i bought when it was down in here it was nine actually i bought on this candle right in here 1105 so i bought on this candle at 950 it cost me 915 sold it on this candle for 1075 see if you don't take it profits look what happened it went from 1075 1080 all the way down to 548 and that's when you'd be panicking sure it came back up for profit but even though even though netflix went higher theta theta really ate away at that and it never breached 10 again so that's why for me if, if i hit my profit targets and I hit the pro targets on my on the on the chart i take my profits and really this this trade was to defend my goldman sachs so i was down 150 on goldman sachs but i traded netflix to defend that position to get a little bit more cash in you know, I didn't want to take the hit from Goldman Sachs, and I saw the opportunity on Netflix. Now Netflix is going up before earnings. It always goes up before earnings, so this is to be expected. Trading Netflix pre-earnings, it happens pretty much every quarter, so it's, it's good opportunities, and the risk is low to the downside. So that's why I've been buying calls on it the last couple of days. But I've been just doing it for the day trade. I mean, because the rip downs are pretty pretty harsh. I mean, this came came from 4:30, basically 4:35 down to 425 at the close you know drop drop 10 points went from ten dollars again back down to ten uh, five and a half on those 430 puts or 430 calls i was trading so if this content was of value to you so far hit the like button i'd appreciate it so that's what i'm looking at in netflix i mean netflix right now parabolic i mean you don't want to short it you, you know don't want to short it. same with amazon you don't want to short it you don't want to get in front of these candles you just you just don't you just don't you know that's just not something that you want to do um kind of going down the list here costco i am still short a call spread i got some money back on today but it's for next week expiration you know if this drops a couple more bucks i mean costco did drop down to like 307 area i was profitable on it and then it bounced back up going into earnings tomorrow i'm going to talk about uh, Morgan Stanley. So Morgan Stanley, same with the other banks, their chart is looking pretty much the same as all the other financial charts that we're looking out there. I am short it to like the, I'm looking for the 36, 34 area tomorrow. I'm hoping it drops down to like the 36 area is what I am targeting. And the trade that I put on here for tomorrow, let me just show you this here. So I actually got a credit for this trade so I got a 26 cent credit and you're like that's not a lot of credit you know why, why did you do this trade for only 26 cents credit and this is this is where I did here is it's a pretty it's a pretty bearish trade I bought one of the 38 puts and then I did three I probably I probably should have done this a little bit better instead of buying three call spreads that are uh, that are dollar dollar wide I probably should have just bought one and, and, and widened out the strike so that was my bad I was kind of rushing through the trade didn't after after I put the trade through I'm like you know what probably shouldn't have bought three call spreads probably should have just made the probably just have made it wider but you know 
it is it is what it is now because I put the trade on. And so I basically, what I'm looking at is if Morgan Stanley opens up flat or closes down tomorrow, I'm gonna be making money. I sold the call spreads to basically cover the cost of the put. And that's where that's why I got a 26% credit. So if we open up flat tomorrow, sure I'll be losing money in the, on the put, but I'll be making money on the call spreads. So we should be able to break even. So I feel like it's relatively safe and it's it's playing to the downside. If we go into the analysis tab, you know what I'm looking at tomorrow, you know, with that 106% IV, let's say let's say IV crushes like 30%. You know, if we if we open around 38, you know, I'll be up like 50 bucks. If we open up around 37, we'll be up like 150 bucks. So, you know, and you can kind of you can kind of, oops, I'm, oh yeah, I did I did the right date there. So you can kind of you can kind of play the numbers and see what your profit is. I mean, if we if we come down to 30, I mean that's going to be a nice payday. 80, but I, I highly doubt. I mean, 30 34 to 36. If we come down to 34, you know, I'll probably be making like 400 bucks. If it comes down to 36, I'll be making like 250. I'd be very happy with the 36. Not trying to be greedy. You know, with earnings trades, if you're right, you know, you don't want to be greedy with it. A lot of people get greedy with it, and you know, that's not something that you want to do with earnings. And that's that's why you know I covered I covered. You know, I closed Bank of America, I closed Goldman Sachs earnings trades, and then I had XLF as well to kind of cover cover that. Um, another trade that I did today that I'm that's more of a long term trade is uh, Peloton. Peloton, I am short the 37 put right now. While I'm long the 37 put, I'm short Peloton. And what I'm looking at here is I bought it for I bought it for 520. So I bought this put 30 days out. For 520, cost me 520. And on Peloton, I mean Peloton, I mean it's ramping up before earnings, but I'm thinking it's probably gonna sell up here to 37. You know, my stop loss is probably gonna be around 38, 39. We'll lose a couple hundred dollars on it, but we have we have a lot of time on it right now. You know, I'm looking for a little bit of retracement. I mean, this has literally gone from 28 to 35, 36 area in just like two days, three days here. So I'm looking for it to kind of kind of fail here. You know, Peloton is at like a nine billion dollar valuation right now. There's a lot, a lot of hype around it concerning coronavirus and stay-at-home gyms and all that kind of thing. And hey, maybe a little bit great, but right now they're not profitable. They don't make any money, and they have a nine billion dollar valuation. So that's why I think this is probably going to get knocked back down within the next 30 days, back down to the 28 area. So we'll play with it. So I bought the 37 put. And I'm, that that's pretty much what I'm looking for on Peloton right now is, you know, if we start coming back down to 35, um, I was I was up a little bit on the retracement, but, you know, if we come back down to the 30 area, we'll be up like 300 bucks on this, on this, on this put. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I'm not looking for, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm probably going to get squeezed a little bit before they they drop it you know i think they might even push like 38 38 and a half and then drop it but you know we'll see we'll see we'll see if if people want to hold on to their gains if people if people bought like at 17 or or even at 20 or 25 are they going to want to hold through earnings i you know i i personally don't think so and also there's a lot of bag holders in this area who bought in the 30s who bought in 35 who bought in in 32 this area right in here a lot of people bought right in this area and they saw their investment drop to 17 and so i feel like there's i mean doesn't seem like it today but i feel like there's gonna be a lot more sellers here people are gonna let it run once once a, a pullback really happens i think it's gonna happen really quickly probably come back down to the 30 to 28 area just right just right in here where it's consolidated so you know that's what i'm looking for on peloton more of a long long term trade longer term trade than like a weekly or daily trade or a swing trade or something like that but that's kind of what i'm looking at if you could do me the favor if you watch the video comment watch to the end hit the like button stay safe stay green it's us versus hurt